The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 74 of your distance learning session for Geology of Basic Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. During Lesson 73, we had an assignment. We shall now proceed to correct the assignment. We were given this map. We were asked to observe the map. Our lesson 73 was on unconformities. So, by observing that map, we have to answer these questions. Using the map above, identify with reasons the different types of unconformities on the map. Trace the plane of each of the unconformities identified. Now, the right approach to the question. The first is that we have angular unconformity because the beds dip in different directions. The red lines on the map. So if we get to our uh, map, you will realize that this is where we have the angular unconformity. This is a plane of unconformity. And you realize that the beds are dipping in different directions. That is an angular unconformity. Then again, we have para, uh, parallel unconformity, given that uh, by the green lines on the map. Now, the, our parallel unconformity will, will be shown like the case where we have um, we have uh, this contact. This is the contact of an unconformity contact. So that is for parallel. We also have this contact on the map. At least this limestone bed. They have two uh, have two different dips. That is also another plane of unconformity. And then on that map again we have. Heterolytic unconformity and heterolytic unconformities here they are represented by blue lines, which indicates that uh, the igneous rock bodies are older than the uh, than the sedimentary rock uh, formations. We also have para unconformity. The para unconformity on the map, therefore, should be the presence of what uh, the presence of manganese nodules. Now, we are still on map work. And we are still under the subtopic interpretation of geologic features on maps. We have seen types of maps. We also saw strike lines, as well as the three uh, point problems, geological history and geological cross sections. We will concentrate on interpretation of geological structures. We will go to interpretation of geological structures five, meaning that our lesson of today will concentrate at looking at interpretation of geological structure five, and we will concentrate on igneous bodies on maps. Now, through our lesson, we will see the objectives, the prerequisites, real-life situation, learning activities, 
we have some exercises, and we will end our lesson with an assignment. As we learn on interpretation of the logical structures 5, purposely on igneous bodies, we should, at the end of this lesson, be able to state the steps for recognizing and describing igneous bodies on maps. Then we now use the steps to recognize and to describe igneous bodies on maps. To have a good appraisal of igneous bodies on maps, generally we need information on derudational geology, the different petrologies, structural geology, and historical geology. Igneous bodies at times in maps occur as intrusions and as lava flows. So this information is very, very important in order for us to appropriate well the different aspects as well as describe igneous bodies on maps. Now, take a look at these photos. Photo A is a beach. Photo B is a fracture. Photo uh, C is sedimentation or stratification. Then photo D is uh, an unconformity. So, a geologist collects petrographic and structural data at different localities in the field. At each sampling point, he notes the coordinates, the name of the locality, and takes a photo of the essential feature. The question we are asking is, which method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures of the different localities. If we use histograms and cumulative frequency curves, can that relationship be clear? What about stereograms and geological maps? Whichever be the method, as we go through our lesson on identification and description of igneous bodies on maps, we will recognize or we will realize which of the method is suitable to reveal this relationship between the rocks and the structures. Now, take a look at this map. That is map 15. Now, map 15, you realize that you have uh, a fault. Then, around here, we have a plane of unconformity. This is the plane of unconformity. And then, that is the plane of unconformity. Then we have regular repetition of bed B and C around bed A. So there is folding, and then we also note the fact that contours are crossing bed boundaries. Now, the striking elements of that map include the fact that contour lines cross bed boundaries, indicating inclined beds. Now, regular repetition of beds and visible displacement indicates tectonic activities. So, in climate and tectonic activities or tectonic effects suggest the deep and the general trend of bed on level ground. Note should be taken that an area that has been affected by tectonic activities can have a lot of influence and intrusions or igneous bodies are one, is one of the uh, uh, geologic events that can cause such Distractions on rocks. That is why when they are presented on maps, it is important to know how to identify and how to interpret what they mean and what effect on the area. Therefore, igneous bodies on maps. We already saw how to you know identify and describe igneous or oh, draw cross sections of igneous bodies. So note should be taken that plutonic rocks represent uh, are represented as what major intrusions while hyperbisa rocks are represented as minor intrusions then volcanic rocks are represented as lava flows and pyroclasts so igneous information or igneous bodies bodies are therefore uh, have therefore partition into two. You have extrusions, extrusions, 
and intrusions. Extrusions are partitioned into two. You have lava flow, which forms organics, and then you have pyroclasts. You have pyroclasts. Then intrusions are divided into two. You have minor and major intrusions. The minor intrusions are partitioned into two. You have dikes and you have seals. You can also have uh, veins, which are related to seals, but they lie uh, concordantly. Then dikes are related also to blocks. Because they lie discordantly. Then major intrusions are partitioned into four. You have bosses, you have stocks, and then you have um you have um you have uh battleids, you have battleids, and then you have bismanit. Bismanit. Okay. So that is the way the igneous information or igneous bodies are, uh, are quickly visualized in the map. Now, step B, uh, part B, steps for recognizing igneous bodies on maps. First step, major intrusions appear with uh, roughly rounded outlines on maps. In other words, semicircular uh, 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 appearance on maps. Like the case of this map. If you look at this map, you will see that this is a semicircular body. A semicircular body. So that should mark a, a, mark a major intrusion. And we say major intrusion are related to what? Plutonic rocks. You have uh, if we have to relate igneous, uh, the, the, that is the plutonic rocks. Plutonic, plutonic rocks. Then we have to know that there are what? Ultra basic, which will go with periodotype. You have basic, which will go with gabbro. You have uh, intermediate, intermediate, which will go with diorite and cyanite. Then you have. Um, uh, you have acids, which will go with granite and pegmatite, as well as granodiorite. Uh, diorite. So these are the different rocks that when you see them in a map, then they represent our major intrusions. Then minor intrusions. We said they are most likely dikes and seals. Then dikes appear as straight out, uh, outcrops or as linear uh, uh, structures. If we get to our map, you will realize that this is a linear structure. So that should be our dike. They are always very visible. We say that dikes will uh, dikes and seals will most likely occur as uh, hyperbisal rocks. And hyperbisal rocks here we have. Basic hyperbisal called dolerite. Then uh, intermediate hyperbisal, we call we, we can uh, relate them to what phonolites, and then equally micro uh, diorite and micro cyanite. Then uh, note should be taking that uh, uh, dolerite, which is basic hyperbisal, is also referred to as diabase. Then acid intermediate would have to do with micro granite, and you also have uh, applites. Then seals follow rock contacts and bedding planes on maps, like the case of our map. This is a seal, this duck, and then this is another seal. You see that it is concentrated, seal is concentrated on bed D, and then is concentrated on bed G. They lie concordantly to beds or to bedding planes. And they also occur as hyperbisal rocks. Then lava flows follow rock contacts. 
and bedding planes. Or they may even flow on what? On beds when you see them on maps. Now, if you look at the case of our map, you will realize that uh, at the northeast portion of the map, this is a structure. That structure is uh, basaltic in comp uh, composition. That is a micro uh, granite. Then, if you get to the southwest portion of the map, you look at the southwest portion of the map, you look at this, our cross map again, showing that this material is lying horizontally, and that is basaltic. So, that is indication of lava flow. And all lava flows on maps will indicate or will, will, be, will be indicated by volcanics or pyroclastics. The different volcanic rocks that we have, volcanic basic, we have basalt, we have um, uh, scoria, and then volcanic uh, intermediate, you have um, uh, andesite, you have trachyte, then uh, volcanic acid, you have obsidian, you have rhyolite, you have peach stone, you have scoria, uh, cumis, and then now uh, generally pyroclast, you have tuff, you have lapini, you have ignimbrite, and you will also have what? Volcanic bones. Then, generally, the coarse grain equivalent will be called agglomerates. So, when you see them on the map, you know that they are pyroclasts. It is very easy to interpret igneous bodies on maps. Now, we'll go to example number one. Identify with reason the features labeled F and J in the map uh, in the maps provided. Now this is F. If you look at F, you will realize that there is a small circle there with a cross inside. That indicates uh, if you see this mark, it is a mark for basalt. So it is a lava flow. Lava flow and here it is lying on the beds. It's lying on other beds. Then the second case, you realize that this other structure cuts across. It's cutting across other beds. So it is a dike. So vividly, feature F is lava flow. Why? Basaltic materials that is lying horizontally and unconformably on bed, uh, bedded materials. As you can see in our uh, in our map again, this is the map case. They are lying unconformably on other rocks, so we can trace a plane of unconformity here. That is a plane of unconformity. Then, uh, feature J is a dike. That is a linear structure that cut across beddings. Now. Map example two. Identify with reasons the type of igneous bodies in the map provided. This is our map. If you get to the assessment of this map, you will realize that um, this is a structure, a linear structure cutting across. So this should be a dike. And then you also realize that um, you have this other structure, it has the mark the, from geologic symbols, these are marked for basalt. So this is also lava flow and it is lying unconformably on other rocks. So you can trace the plane of unconformity here, this way, yep, and then you have your uh, intrusions. So, feature three. This is feature three. That is the uh, basaltic uh, uh, materials. Feature three is lava flow. Why? Basaltic materials line horizontally and unconformably on embedded materials. Then we have feature five. This is our feature five. Feature five. Feature five is so. Uh, is our dike that is uh, feature five and uh, we have it that feature five is a dike 
That is a linear structure that cuts across beddings. The older, the, that is, the, 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 the older, the, the dike is older than the lava flow. Since it is, it does not cut through the lava flow. For example, we get back to the map, we realize that the lava flow is on the dike. It covers a portion of the dike, and so the dike does not cut through the lava flow. Therefore, the dike is older than the lava flow. Now, the next is steps for describing igneous bodies on maps. It is one thing identifying and it is another thing to what? Describe it. So, in order to describe an igneous body on the map, first thing, locate and, uh, locate and state the train for seals and dikes. You locate and you state the, 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 the train for seals and dikes. Perhaps this is, for example, a map, and uh, this is our dike. This dike is, is at the center portion of the map, and it is trailing where north is southwest. Now, if in terms of Greek references, then if this map has Greek references, then you come to the middle of the dike and then go anywhere, anywhere in the dike, and then you extrapolate and you read your easting, and then you also extrapolate and you read your northing. It will give you the Greek reference for the dike. Then state the rocks affected and beds intruded. Then you, the, that is, the intrusions are located on the stratigraphical column with their names. So if you go to the stratigraphical column and you see names of plutonic rocks, it should tell you that that is a major intrusion. If you see names of hyperbisal rocks, that is a minor intrusion. Very easy to go by. Now, you state with reason the type of intrusion. Then you date the intrusion. Dating here is both relative and absolute. If the intrusion, for example, intrudes on Cretaceous rocks, then that intrusion is post-Cretaceous. Now, if the intrusion cuts through, let's say, uh, a fold, then that intrusion or if it intrudes on the fold or unfolded bed, then the intrusion is younger than the than the than the, the fold. That is how to date both relative and absolutely. Example three: Describe the igneous bodies in the map below. This is our map. Now we go to this is our key. Down here we have granite. Next, we have um, we have uh, diorite, we have uh, dolerite, and then we have basalt, and we have agglomerate. So, just from the key, you can already know the type of in, 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 uh, intrusions that are there. Granite will indicate major intrusions. Dolerite will in, indicate minor intrusions. Basalt will indicate lava flow. Agglomerate will indicate pyroclasts. So, this is where we have. Granite, so that should be this is a semicircular that should be a major intrusion, and you can see the contact or real with this marks with M. Then you have uh, this cutting across that should be our doleritic uh, dike, and then you also see this other uh, dolerite uh, are cropping only on or lying parallel to the bed C both here and also here. You have it here, then you have it only our crops on bed C. So that should be a seal. Then you have now the basaltic mark. And when you look at the basaltic mark, you realize that the contours are only outcropping on that bed. They, they are only lying parallel to this bed, meaning that they are the lava flow is lying on other beds. So, from the analysis of that map, Agglomerates at the northeast portion of the map. That is, at the northeast portion of the map, we are pyro, uh, pyroclasts because they are lying concordantly on basalt. And then, uh, since we have the name agglomerates, we know that agglomerates are coarse grain uh, welded materials and they are pyroclasts. Then, 
basaltic lava flow at the north portion of the map, lying unconformably on beds A, B, C, and D. Then we have doleritic dikes. It's not only one at the southwest portion of the map, with an, uh, with, uh, which are line or which are linear structures cutting across beds B, C, and D, as well as it uh, is uh, displaced. If it is displaced by a fault, meaning that the dike was there first, then the fault came later. Then we also have a seal, which is a linear structure lying parallel on bed C and is also displaced, meaning that the intrusions are older than the fault. Now, we have granitic intrusions at the southeast portion of the map, like we saw. It is a circular structure affecting bed C, D, and E. Then lastly, we also have another granitic intrusion with a dolerite seal or the, 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 the order of occurrence or the dating relatively begins with granite intrusion. Then you have dolerite seal. Then we have the dike. The dolerite seal is if we get back to the map, you will realize that the dolerite seal, if you look at the dolerite, this is uh, the seal, and you realize that the dike is cutting across the seal in either uh, cases. This one also cuts across the seal, so the seal was there first before the dike. So the seal is older than the dike. So in order of occurrence, Granitic intrusions occurred first, followed by dolerite seal, then the dolerite dike, the lava flow, and agglomerates are the last things to occur in that area. Now, recall that um, igneous bodies on maps include plutonic rocks, which represent a major intrusions, hyperbisal rocks, which represent minor intrusions, Volcanic rocks, which represent lava flows as well as pyroclasts. Then, major intrusions have semicircular outlines. Dikes cut across beddings. Seals will follow rock contacts as well as bedding planes. Then, lava flows follow rock contacts or they will lie on the rocks. To describe igneous bodies on maps, you have to state the location and the train for seals and dikes. And then you state the uh, rocks affected as well as state with reason the type of intrusion. Then you date the intrusion. Now, we have been going through maps and we have been relating structures. Therefore, from the situation we provoke at the beginning of the lesson, the only best way or the best method to reveal the relationship between structures and rocks can only be using geological maps. Stereograms and histograms as well as cumulative frequency curves will not clearly give the relationship. So, our exercise is on this map. You observe that map well, and then you realize that this is lava flow, this is basaltic information, with the cross mark on it, meaning that it is lying horizontally. Then you see these are also intruded uh, structures. So, identify the igneous body at the southwest portion of the map above. This is the southwest portion of the map. So, that igneous body is C, uh, uh, lava flow. It cannot be basalt. Basalt is the name of a rock, and we are looking for structures. Quad porphyry in the map refers to A. Bartolite, B. Uh, dike, C. Pyroclast, D. Seal. The quad porphyry refers to A. Dike. Then, map for exercise 3. This is another map. When you look at that map, you will see igneous bodies. These are semicircular bodies. This is a structure cutting across, and this is a structure line. Parallel. So, vividly, 
you will realize that using map 3 above, describe the igneous bodies on the map. Date the igneous, uh, the, in, the intrusions on the map. So, at 0350, uh, at 030505, we have a linear structure cutting across sandstone, bed, and major intrusions. So, that is a dike. Then a seal at 050548, a linear structure line parallel on the shell bed. Then we have granitic intrusion at 020500, which is a circular structure affecting sandstone, shell, and mudstone beds. Then relatively, the granitic intrusion is there first, and then followed by the dike, and then the seal, because the dike, cuts, uh, uh, the dike does not cut across the, the seal. Therefore, the dike should have been older than the seal. Now, we get this map for our assignment. You shall work with this map at home, you observe it, assess it, and answer the following questions. Describe the igneous bodies on the map and date the intrusions on the map. You can use geology for advanced level. You can also use the principles of geology, and that will assist you to understand well the different intrusions, how to uh, different igneous bodies, how to describe them, and how to identify them on maps. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on interpretation of geological structures. Six, we will focus on surface deposits. See you in our next lesson. Una tege si, ma tege yop, una tege minga, ma tege nyum, una tege majang, ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana, ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen